Thank you for joining us. I'm Mike Spence on the TSPN TV News Desk, and we're here today with a special guest, Elizabeth Chapin Ponoti. And we're going to take a quick break and come back. We're going to talk about what's going on with the new school year coming up. So please stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Welcome back, Mike Spence, TSPN TV News Desk with Elizabeth Chapin Panotti from the school district. I would say that your title is the assistant superintendent of the school district, but I know you have like a five word title. So why don't you give that one to us, Elizabeth? It's assistant superintendent of curriculum, instruction, and school services. I, maybe I could have remembered <laughs> that, maybe I could have. That's a wonderful title because it, it sums up a lot of the different functions that you serve and you do serve quite a few up there. The school district, uh, I can't imagine, I thought a corporation and a company was complex in terms of what goes in, into running the day-to-day -day operations, but the school district is like running, you know, major corporation. You guys have a lot going on right now. A lot going on. It's, I, it's an, a very complex organizational structure. Well, with the new school year and everything, everything kind of comes up to this accelerated place and you know you're really kind of getting out of the blocks and I appreciate you taking the time to come and chat because we have a lot going on with uh, the school district the different schools and you know why don't you tell our viewers just a little bit about how you, you see this new year uh, shaping up well it's it's actually going to be a great year well I think all of them are going to be great years especially at the start of the year the kids come and that's what education is about it's about the kids in the classroom um, we we started off with a bang. Um, we're transitioning to the Common Core State Standards, which are um, a new standards that were adopted um, to go into effect th over the next school year. So the teachers will be gearing up to learn them. This is the last year for the current CST test. So things in the classroom will be changing and, and moving back to um, a more hands-on active participation approach. So it should be an exciting year and exciting for years to come. That's good. Yeah, it sounds like the teachers like that core thing. It's not a negative at all. And there's a little less testing, you know, and a little more freedom to kind of get into, you know, some of that uh, subject matter. The benefit we have with California is our standards were already world class, and they used California standards as part of the, um, as, as benchmarks for, uh, one of the set of benchmarks for um, the standards, the Common Core State standards. So they're not significantly different. It's more, um, it's more of a depth of knowledge that we get to teach as opposed to a breadth of knowledge. And um, it's more active participation, more kids doing as opposed to sitting there marking multiple choice. Um, right tests which yeah, the is testing, wonderful. The testing thing was a little over the top you know if you're just doing nothing but testing teachers don't really feel like they're getting a chance to teach. And, exactly you know. and these tests are great because the other tests were criterion tests which is like a chapter test. You learn this set of material these standards and then um, you'll have a 60 point test at the end of the chapter. That's basically what the CSTs were for each subject. These are like computer adaptive tests where you answer the first question and based on your answer you go in a different direction. So everybody takes a different test based on what they know and how they answer and so you can get real growth models as opposed to yes I learned this or no I didn't learn this but I started at A and I got up to F toward at the probably not a good example to use but I started at one and got up to five um, and Johnny started at one and got up to three but they both showed growth so yeah, it's, it's a just a fair. different model yeah. yeah a little fairer all the way around now when we started the new school year I know that there was a budget uh, that came out earlier few months ago and there was a projection in terms of the, the number of students that would be enrolled. Uh, we came out a little bit below last year but not by much. How many students are uh, starting the year? We approximately 50 students fewer than attended our schools last year. So so it's we're still in declining enrollment but not as significant of a decline that then was projected. And that's pr pretty much exactly what was projected. That was kind of pretty close to the mark. Very close to the mark. How do you guys, uh, how do you get so accurate with that? <laughs> the business office has a formula and you know and it's a tried and true formula based on you know they take a longitudinal study and plug all the numbers into a formula and it magically appears with a number that's usually pretty accurate. I know there was some speculation in the newspaper like you guys are making up numbers to benefit the school district in some way or another but it turned out to be absolutely accurate in terms of what those numbers were. Absolutely <laughs> and, and that, that, I mean that usually happens yeah. there's you know when people don't understand the formula or or something's complex or there's so many layers as there are in education, you know, people always speculate, and and sometimes there are rumors that go around. But 
people, you know, always think there is an agenda or, you know, some sort of manipulation uh, when you're just trying to do the best you possibly can with, you know, what you're working with. And, and it's been a challenge. How long have you been with the school district now, Elizabeth? Eleven years. Eleven years. Yeah. So you've seen some challenging years just recently. We this have. This has become more and more challenging as you kind of go along? It has, but, you know, but the agenda has actually always been the same, to provide the best education for the students. You know, and most of us who get into education, I'd venture to say all of us in this county do so because we love kids and we, well, we each might have a different way of, of providing the best or, or a different idea of what the best is. That's what we want for students. And it has been challenging the last five years. And in spite of the challenges, you know, our accountability scores have continued to go up and up. And not just the accountability scores in, in that our attendance rates have gone up, our graduation, our graduation rates have gone up, dropout rates have gone down. So it's not just the one, one or two accountability measures that we weigh it on. It's, it's school culture. It's kids are coming to school and they're graduating. The graduation thing is extremely important and keeping them on track even in the community college direction. Absolutely. You know, we have a new Amador County Community College Foundation and, you know, there's a great facility now, the Behavioral Sciences Health Building over there. And uh, they have a lot of events coming up, which I always kind of promote Absolutely. On, on every show. Uh, but that's the biggest investment we can make in the future is their education and, and to get them through that high school time is a difficult, you know, at that age, and I've had, you know, I have one son in college, and, you know, the high school years were, were tough, you know, it's a tough time to keep them on track and make sure that they stay motivated, and now I have a daughter who's a senior, you know, she's always had perfect grades, so now she's a senior, what's the sense in doing anything? She's already picked her college, she's already got it done, exactly. she, so she could just float through the whole year, right? I don't think so. <laughs> at least not until January. You have look to at the stay first. motivated exactly. and exactly. you have to figure out ways to, you know, get these kids, you know, on track and keep them on track. And, you know, that's a big challenge. It is a big challenge, but that's where the extracurricular activities come in and the school culture <coughs> comes in. And, and there are so many clubs and organizations for our students to join. And, and really, if you walk around our campuses, it's, they, you know, they're clean, the kids are happy, and it's, it's a great nurturing place for students to come. And most kids like going, even if it's just to hang out with their friends and, and, and you know, pick up the classes as they go along. There are, are a lot of clubs and associations. I know my daughter started a few different things, and it's like, Boy, don't you have anything to do? Who would go to, you know, start a club like that? It was called what? You know, just these odd off-the-wall things, but they're very popular. And, you know, you see the level of involvement, and um, you see the kids. And when you look at all those budgetary cuts, you know, we can talk about that in the second half of the show, but how it affects, you know, the AP classes and the different programs and keeping all those programs in action instead of being cut uh, you know, we're, we'll definitely talk a little bit more about that. Mm -hmm. We'll have some more time in the second half of the show because I, I have some questions. Okay, and awesome. And you're the perfect person to ask because <laughs> you're so informative and, and so active with, uh, you know, the school district and everything that's going on too with the, you know, consolidation ideas and that committee that's working on that. We'll come back with more information about that. And I've got a long list of things we can chat about. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just fun to have you on and be able to talk about the school district. I, uh, you know, my both of my children went through... Uh, our local schools here in Pioneer and Amador and Argonaut High Schools and, and uh, it's just been really, you know, I like to try to give back to, mm -hmm. you know, a system that's been so good for them. You know, I've done a great job with them. But we're going to go to a little bit of a break and then we're going to come right back with Elizabeth chapin Panotti okay. and talk a little bit more about the school district. So please stay tuned. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.